you have your birth date, you have your death date, and then you have that dash in the middle. What are you doing with the dash? Because the dash is what's going to determine what you leave in the end. Mm -hmm. Because once that date for death comes, there's no more going back and adding to or repurposing, relaunching, and refreshing. It's what we do in that dash. And every mm. second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, we're living the dash. And I know mm. personally, if I die tomorrow, I want to know that the dash that I lived previous to that moment, I did it to the fullest. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Dharani. Today we have with us Eric Bailey. Eric is a globally renowned motivational speaker whose incredible journey from despair to dominance has captivated audiences around the world. With a remarkable career spanning 13 years as a professional basketball player in Australia. Welcome to our show, Eric. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure and a blessing uh, to be able to uh, spend some time with you and hopefully empower and enlighten uh, your viewers wherever they are in the world. That is wonderful. You're coming with some phenomenal energy here, so I love it. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Basketball? Is that what you wanted to do professionally growing up? Well, no, actually, what I wanted to do was to become a veterinarian when oh. I was very young. Yeah, when, when I was very young, I, I, I had a fascination with animals. So I would, anytime I found something that was wounded, a bird, a cat, I would bring it home and rehabilitate it and send it back into the wild. And uh, it wasn't until I was probably, oh. I was probably about 12 years of age and I was six foot one inches tall. And uh, I was sitting at the breakfast table and my, my parents were talking about their financial struggles because we lived in South Central Los Angeles, very poor economic uh, area. And they got so in-depth in the conversation that without thinking, I had a solution. Why don't I play professional basketball? And my father reminded me that, number one, you've got a bone disease in both your knees. You've got a hole in your lung. You've got nerve damage in your eyes. It's probably going to be very difficult, son, for you to go from never playing sport to playing professional basketball. And then my mother looked over at him and said, if that's his dream, Joe, let's support him. And unfortunately for me, my father took that literally because at 4 a.m. that very next morning, he had me over to the courts <laughs> training. And I said to him, Dad, Seriously, what, what about the weekend or, or give me time to work my way up to this? And he planted that seed. He said, if your goal is to dominate, if your goal is to be the best that you can be, why wait? And that set my whole mind into wow. dream big, take advantage of opportunities. Your time is now. There is no tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Don't die with the song still playing and you be hungry. And yeah. through that, I went on to uh, become a high school basketball All-American. Went to a junior college uh, for two years in Chicago. Then went to Boise State University. I was a rookie free agent with the Portland Trailblazers. Didn't make it and then came to Australia and played for 13 years as a pioneer in the NBL, and now the National Basketball League in Australia is housing Americans, Europeans, and everybody coming over here to play, to get themselves ready for the NBA. So I was a part of that growth in basketball in Australia. But it started with a dream at 12 years of age. Amazing. And you were surprised that he started to get you working out the next day, oh, but that was such a huge lesson, though. I speak at, at so many conventions and keynotes and small teams. And the first thing I will say to individuals is that time waits for no man or woman. Your idea, if you don't do anything about it, 
it becomes somebody else's success. Mm. And the next thing, what you're doing is you're looking at that and go, that was my idea. I had that. No, you had the thought. Mm. You didn't have the action to make that dream a reality. So Mm. now as I go through life, I always have this saying to myself, and that is, what can I do today that I didn't do yesterday that's going to make me better tomorrow? And because of that, all action, all Mm. energy, all enthusiasm. Mm. And no better time than the present moment. It's not about tomorrow. It's what you can do now. And that's just the difference between a dreamer and a doer because dreaming is beautiful. It's amazing, incredible gift that we have. But if we don't take that into a spiritual movement, actually use this body to move into something, to create something, it's just just a dream. So Dreaming dreaming is safe. Dreaming is comfortable. Because after Mm. the dream, you can sit back and analyze and you can sit back and reflect and then you can make up in your mind that you will do it some other time. The champions, yeah. the most successful people in the world, they look at their dream and not say when, they say how, and then they go at it. Mm. And so the despair to dominance that you speak about at your events is that from that story or was there something else that led to that despair to basketball later on in your career? The despair came at birth when I was born with all of these injuries. The doctors basically said to my parents within the first couple of months that the chances of me ever walking or running or being normal like other kids uh, was not likely, not probable. And so my parents had to make a decision. Do they coach me up? Do they empower me? Do they build my dream? Or do they just walk away? And they walked away. So I was placed in a hospital and I was placed in foster care. And for the first three years of my life, parents would come and adopt me or take me home and make a decision of whether or not they wanted to keep me. But because I didn't get along with the other kids or I kept falling down or I was going to be costly. They kept returning me and saying, we want to upgrade. We want a different model. By the time I was three years of age, I was mentally, physically, emotionally beat down. And I had at three years of age, I was in this facility for kids who basically weren't wanted. These two strangers, this man and this woman, walked into this facility. They both were 46 years of age, couldn't have children, and had wanted to adopt for 10, 15 years. Saw this little kid with braces on his legs and a patch over his eye and walked up to him and he said, hey, how would you like to come home with us? We want to give you a shot at life. And from age three to age 14, every night, my father said to me, be bold, be bold. And of course, at that age and even at 14, I didn't understand what be bold actually meant. But as I got older, it all revealed itself. Bold meant from day one when he saw me, believe. Believe that you were born to do something amazing. Believe in yourself. Believe in this opportunity. Oh, be oblivious. Be oblivious to the noise. Be oblivious to to the perception. Be oblivious to the negativity in the world and even the voice that you're hearing in your head. And L, learn something new every day. Learn how to communicate. Learn how to be positive. And D, dream big, be decisive, and then you will dominate. That boldness, that is my mantra in everything that I do. That is powerful. Eric, thank you so much for sharing. And another thing that comes to mind about how he spoke to you about bold, at that age or even older, you were hearing it, but like you said, it didn't really comprehend. But later on in your life, it really got you. It got you moving. There's so many things that we tell our children and and, and as parents, as guardians, 
that we think that is just going right over them or just leave the room or they're not paying attention. We always think nothing is working. What's happening? But uh, that story also proves that whatever we do in a positive manner with our kids and people that look up to us, later on, at one, some point, it is going to click. It is going to okay. do something for them in their life. Yeah. I have a, I have a 30, I have a 36 year old daughter and I have two, two grandkids and I spend a lot of time with my grandkids, spend a lot of time with my daughter. She only lives five, five minutes from me. So we have a good relationship. But even now at 36 years of age, she might call me or text me or come over and she say, dad, I remember you telling me this when I was 10 years of age. And now I find myself telling Logan or me telling my grandkids that like it, it really, it stayed with me. So as parents, as, as leaders, as guardians, as family members, we have to continue to just plant that seed, just keep dropping that seed. And even if you can't see the tree growing or the leaves, or you can't see the roots taking hold, you've got to keep fertilizing the soil and just keep dropping, drop. And in one day, you're going to see it. And then you're going to know that what you were doing actually was creating your legacy and you were changing the world. Because mm. it just doesn't stop with that one person. It just keeps streaming. It just keeps going as a legacy. And that's wonderful that, who knows, your father, for example, it was something that was given to him as a child. Do you know if that information was given to him by his parents? I, like, I have, I, I, I don't know that, but I do know mm. that my dad was a man of really solid principles. He wasn't, a, he wasn't an emotional man, but he was the kind of man who, whenever he spoke, it was profound. My father actually marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, so wow. his whole ethos in life was taking life by the throat of the neck and trying to shake every single ounce of joy and love and, and everything he could out of it. So when he spoke, th there were powerful words. Mm -hmm. So that definitely helped you in your career as well. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah I can tell. Yeah, that's great. Can you share a powerful story from one of your events that made a huge impact on the audience? Yeah. So last week I was speaking and I was sharing the story about resilience. And I was talking about going through COVID and I was talking about uh, the fact that a lot of people stopped engaging in, in a social interaction and activity. And I was talking about how a lot of people hold on to their past to prevent them from really enjoying their future. And I talked about my story about being adopted. And sometime even now, I ask myself, what would my life be like if my biological parents would have kept all, all those type of things? Mm -hmm. Afterwards, one of the CEO came up to me and said, Eric, I just have to tell you, I was adopted and I have been sh very shameful about it for over 40 years, he says, but after hearing your story and how you were able to open up and share your story, I don't feel alone anymore. I don't, I don't feel like I'm the odd man out now. I, I feel like you've liberated me. And he said, I just wanted to thank you. And, I, and he said, from this point onwards, I'm not going to hide my past and I'm not going to be ashamed about the things that have happened to me in the past because those things have made me stronger and they've brought me to where I am today. So he said, thank you so much. And, I, and what I took from that was we are where we are right now for a reason. And if we can appreciate that and we can gravitate to the fact that every day we have a chance to express ourselves, to bring joy and light into dark places in the world, into the workplace, into our home lives, if we can embrace that, we're going to just by default and organically be able to elevate the lives of other people around us. And I believe that's our calling to do, no matter what mm -hmm. industry we're in. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful story. I know. And having the ability to be, participate in life is such a huge gift when we're here. We don't see it with all the noise and all the other stuff that's being said in, in our head and outside and other people we get so consumed with what's happening, but if we calm things down and really look at 
life in general and the beauty around us. And you just don't take it too serious and you make it a game and you just enjoy each moment and be present. You start seeing how precious this is. We were born and then we're going to die eventually. But this time that we have is such a gift. Look, life is so short. I talk about, I always talk about the two most important days in anyone's life. The day that you were born and the day that you worked out why. Because when you work out why you were born, then you understand your purpose and you work towards your purpose. The other thing I always talk about is you have your birth date, you have your death date, and then you have that dash in the middle. What are you doing with the dash? Because the dash is what's going to determine what you leave in the end. Mm -hmm. Because once that date for death comes, there's no more going back and adding to or repurposing, relaunching, and refreshing. It's what we do in that dash. And every mm -hmm. second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, we're living the dash. And I know mm -hmm. personally... If I die tomorrow, I want to know that the dash that I lived previous to that moment, I did it to the fullest. Agree. Agree. Very well said. Thank you for sharing that, Eric. That dash the is dash. such a small little dash. But the dash. It can, yeah, it can make it such a huge impact in your own life, what you live in that dash, but what you leave behind for the people around this concept of even of the show and meeting wonderful people like you and what you have done and spreading that message is evergreen. You're leaving something that may impact someone in a hundred years if they see this video and they're not in a good place and they watch this or hear this, if it's still available, I'm not sure, but I'm saying it could make an impact even then in someone's life. Yeah. Look, Yeah. no one with great intellect back in 1960 or 1970, or 1980, ever thought that I, me, the little black kid who basically was supposed to die and never be successful, would ever play professional basketball, would ever travel to 13 countries, would ever speak in front of four and a half million people, would ever reach the age of 63 and be considered one of the best motivational speakers and coaches and mentors in the world. No one ever thought that except one person, mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I knew that one day I would do something special. Mm -hmm. I just had to keep living the dash. Yeah. And that is my yeah. message that I leave in every boardroom, in every uh, convention center, in every one-on-one -on -one coaching session, in every Zoom. It's like, what are you doing in the dash? Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you for sharing it on our show. Yeah. And that belief makes magic happen. Every success story of the past, when you look at them, you'll see they had this very strong subconscious belief that was unbreakable, like nothing phased it. It didn't matter what happened on the outside. They just knew you're going to do those things and you did it like that's that is right there is such a huge gift that every human being has that can they can tap into it, but they just have to believe. They have to have that passion, that vision, that purpose. And you found that purpose. And I hope you have a, a long life that you can continue to spread this message. I have a, a one question about your events. A lot of people go to these events. They get pumped up. They listen to this stuff. They take it in. Or if you go on a podcast, they consume this information. It has an effect on them for minutes, hours days, weeks, but eventually disappears from their life. And then they're back to the old programming. What can you provide right now to people that consume this information, what they could do to make it part of them so they can see and experience some true changes in their life from this information? The best possible thing that you can do is you can journal. That is 100% the best, is when you are going to these events or you have a speaker come to your university or in your boards and whatever, 
bring your own book and you write copious amounts of notes. And at the end of the day, underneath it, you devise your own action plan. How did you feel when the speaker said this? What were some of your immediate thoughts about um, what you could do? And you use that as your playbook. So as a professional athlete, uh, before the season, the coach gave us a playbook. And in the book, it had all of the plays we were going to execute. If the team did this, we were going to do that. Everything that, that you possibly could, could use in order to, be, to win a championship. Us personally journaling what we're taking on in our own handwriting, reading it ourselves, and then taking it back is the first thing. The second thing I always suggest anyone is to do is to grab their phone and speak your language, speak your notes into the phone after every speaker or after every day. And mm -hmm. then you have to use it. Don't put it in the drawer. Don't put it in the cupboard. Listen to it every day. If the speaker or the wherever you go, they have a podcast that they're offering you or they might have some videos or YouTube clips, get connected and make sure that you find a way to keep that message going over and over in your head. Hmm. Thank you, Eric. That's a, a, a big issue, especially people going into sales training. The companies invest so much money because they truly want some results and they want fellow colleagues to improve in their life and what they do. It just improves overall health and happiness. It's, it's a good thing. It's a positive thing, but it's unfortunately not kept. So thank you for sharing that. Appreciate that information. Can you share, Eric, many entrepreneurs suffer from self-doubt or fear. Is there something that you can advise that they could do to help with that? The first thing is remembering why you are an entrepreneur. Why do you want to have multiple streams of income? Why do you want to set yourself up for the future? Once you understand what that why is, then you have to then have, once again, it's all about planning, your daily to-do list. And you have to stick to that daily to-do list to make sure that you are doing all of the, the things that you need to do to get results. Most people, particularly entrepreneurs, they spend a lot of times doing the fuzzy stuff that is a little bit emotional, makes you feel good, but it doesn't really what they like. Yeah, it doesn't drive the business. So you have to hmm. do the stuff that's going to get you what you want immediately. You want to do that first. Entrepreneurs hmm. also suffer from trying to talk to other people about your entrepreneurial idea who don't have an entrepreneurial brain. And what happens is they talk you down to the point where you start to doubt yourself. So I always say, if I'm going to talk to someone about my idea, I want to make sure that they are an ideas person. If I'm going to talk to someone about my idea, I want to talk to someone who potentially is going their own path as an entrepreneur, because now I know I'm surrounded by people who think like me. So that's one thing about entrepreneurs that you, 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 you've got to find a way to stay connected to those other people. Yeah. We call it as the knowing doing gap. You got to decrease yeah. the knowing doing gap. We consume so much information as, especially as an entrepreneurs, we just keep taking strategies, take, take, and learning more stuff. We feel good that we know a lot. We can have those conversations, but the doing decreases and we have to focus on doing the things that are going to get us closer to that purpose or goal. Yeah. Appreciate that information. I appreciate your time today, Eric. We usually have a 20 minute, 25 minute mark. That's what people like for episodes. Yeah. If you would love to come again on the show and talk further, I'd love to have you. It was a great meeting. I like the way you speak. It's definitely very inspiring and motivating. And I've also picked up some information that the energy and nothing that can be mimicked, but it inspired me to amp up the way I speak as well. So I appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me and to all of your mm -hmm. listeners. Yeah, just keep getting locked into to this podcast. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to grow. And just remember, you don't get what you want in life. You only get what you work for. Perfect. Thank you, Eric. And audience, okay. thank you.